do a clap. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sitting down with us, sir. Um, it's been a um, it, it's been about a three year journey for us in terms of actually Indian cinema in general and Indian culture uh, that we started on our channel, and you've been at the forefront of that, obviously. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so it's it, it's an absolute you've been bombarded with yes. yes. Uh, it's it's been an absolute um, honor to be able to sit down with you. Not only because you're also probably the first. Uh, Indian artist that most people in America were exposed to in yeah. Slumdog Millionaire um, and, and that but now that we've been able to explore you even more um, it's it's a uh, it's really exciting to be able to sit down and talk with you well first thing I want to talk about is actually uh, a video we saw not too long ago I think it was called cultural renaissance mm -hmm. and your, your your passion to bring to light uh, Indian artists uh, and, and get the world to realize the amount of talent coming out of India. And that's one of our, our passions as well. Yes. Uh, so if you can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think uh, coming, being born in South India, then, you know, making it North India, that, that itself is a big divide. Even though India, we feel one, but languages, cultures, mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of divide in a way. So some good things get left out in mainstream. Yeah, so right. you know, the Hindi industries, People call it Bollywood, which I don't like. Yeah, Both right. Yes. Bollywood. <laughs> yeah. It's a derivative, and uh, so that gets a lot of publicity. But then there are regional films, uh, industries like Malayalam and yep. Telugu and Tamil, mm -hmm. and Kannada and Bengali and Punjabi and the list yes. goes on. And these regional has a lot of gems in it. You know, yep. about classical music, about Indian culture. And all yes. That stuff. So even the folk artists, you know, if you go into the deeper folk, they have great, uh, you know, humanity in the songs. They have a sense of because I've, I think it was 90s, early 90s. I bought this 150 CDs of all the world cultures, mm -hmm. African. <laughs> Even though I couldn't listen to everything, but I kind of got fascinated by the enormity of uh, how many cultural, you know, traditions are there in music. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in the way they sing, the nuances, how they enunciate a word, and all that stuff. So. I think when Maja guys came to me, I said, I want you to spearhead this one. I said, I was gladly accepted. That's, that's what I've been. And we've been talking for like five, six years. I've been telling them, like, you know, you should expand the listener base of, you know, folk music and probably give it, give them in the way where they can appreciate it. Yeah. Because raw stuff can never be appreciated, right? Yes. It needs to be presented. And you guys are doing a great job, so. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. It is our passion. I mean, before the channel started, we've always been celebrators of artistry and it's really opened our minds and what we want to see other people in the West in particular open their minds to the broader artistry that's outside of what in America they're most accustomed to. Like when Slumdog came out, I think everybody was listening, it was on the hit charts, was Jai Ho. I mean, everybody listened to that and knew of that. But what they don't know is what you just mentioned, all of the regional aspects and the artistry mm -hmm. from those places. Is that, you grew up obviously in music, your, your father was a composer, you grew up in the studio, but very early on you also started to study Western music. So mm -hmm. was world music something you were passionate about from a very early age or was there a point where it started to expand for you in your both appreciation and composition? Yeah, I think, you know, when, when you have something mainstream, it's a bread, bread and butter. I go play in the studios where, you know, South Indian folk music and classical and, you know, cinema music. Right. Then you just want to be away from it in your listening so I always went out and I was listening to you know, John Williams and Angelus and then you know Latin uh, bands and then Chinese records and then um, Bach, you know, the switched on Bach, Wendy Carlos, yeah. record, which is my favorite. So these things actually taught me that there's a world outside my little South Indian mm -hmm. film music mm -hmm. world. So Chennai was almost like the capital of that mm -hmm. because all four industries were together and my right. dad was there. Like there'll be a Malayalam recording here, there'll be a Telugu recording here, there'll be kind of So I grew up with that. And uh, then later, strangely, we were backing uh, El Shankar, you know, mm -hmm. who was a Shakti, yeah. John McLaughlin. He came in with his wife, uh, Carol, at that time. And she said, can you guys back us up? So we had a little studio band. So, you know, traveling with them, because we adored Shakti, we adored Shankar, we, we, he did a record. And then that record, actually, three days, I was there in the production, how they were, like, doing things, which are completely, you know, right. not the way we do. Right. And they did one song for three days, and then in in pockets. Mm -hmm. I said because I was I come from industry where there's seven to one and two nights. Seven to one, the song has to be right. done and mastered. Right, right. done, song, completed. 
mixed and mastered. Right. <laughs> so it's, all, like, it's, it's like, like that with all artistry, right? It seems like the film industry does that too. It's like just pump yeah, that stuff out. Yeah. yeah. And I said like, so when I came in, I said, I will purposely do a song for six months and let's see what who's capable. <laughs> So, not that, I realized that when you do something instinctively, you can go back and say, oh, I can do that better. Mm -hmm. I can have a better backing, I can have a better arrangement, I can change the harmony there, mm -hmm. I can bring in a chorus there. So all these ideas come later. Mm. When you instinctively do, you just do, you want to finish it. Right. You don't want to complete it. You want right. To <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, the completion comes from a lot of listening, a lot of tweaking, and then finally it arrives. And then. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to people and people hate it. <laughs> hate it. Why is this right. like this? Why is this this uh, way? And because it takes such a process, they realize, oh my God, no, it's, it's something nice about it. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to it and listen to it. Then, then three weeks and four weeks, oh, I love it. Yeah. So this has been my life story for the past 30 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, on, that, on that note, uh, you're, a lot of artists have a certain style. We've always been so impressed, obviously, by you. Um, but the fact that you don't have a particular style, you like to change it up a lot. I mean, basically, come from. You know, that's an amazing thing working in India. Nobody's judging you. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this guy is doing rock and roll. That's not his forte. Mm -hmm. right. He's doing South Indian classical. That's not his forte. He's doing, uh, you know, classical arrangement. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not his. So nobody's judging you. As long as it sounds good to the ears. They're very open. Yeah. Unlike when you come to the West, hey, you put a funk and you put a world music that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, yeah. They go into that. Right. They go into you know research and I feel like threatened by all that yeah. stuff. Right. I it's said, does that strange. sound good? And then does it feel in one world? Yeah. Today, can you just pinpoint in an airport that this person is this nationality? These mm -hmm. are from the you know mother and father of this. The world is changing. Yeah. Yes, thankfully. A new world is being yeah. born. It was, yes. I'm adapting to that. I've been adapting for about 30 years. Yeah. There, was, there was actually a song that we just reacted to I know a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was this amazing jazz composition that you did. Adia? Is that what it's? Uh, Adia. Adia. Yeah. Um, oh, no, that, yeah. That, the, it was this amazing, obviously, video, but the song was this jazz composition with, um, and it was oh, absolutely, Adia, yeah, yes. Adia, yeah. Yeah. Well, Blue's gonna one it. of my favorites. Um, and, but yeah, fun playing in this yeah you, you kind of brought this whole jazz uh, fusion Blue's to, uh, to a, a Billy Bill's Tamil film. Um, <laughs> and uh, how did people, it, it's Actually, it was a the, the main character was a Christian, you know, okay. in that, and then he was a fisherman. So I said, like, Christian, you know, the music stuff actually expands. Yeah. You know, people go to church, right. and they sing uh, choir harmonies, mm -hmm. and so I just took a liberty of going a little more further because mm -hmm. I've seen Black Church and sure. you know, I've seen yeah. I've been to Boston and all this stuff, and then I said, why can't we do this? And then let's see. If they hate it, it's fine. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a fan. Well, that touches a little bit on I wanted to ask you. Like every time we hear your music, my thought is, what's your, what's your process for the creation? And I know it would be different because you have done everything. If you if you if you look up this man, <laughs> you'll see every possible musical expression from TV shows and jingles to classical music in both Eastern and Western styles to jazz to blues. You pretty much can write everything. But is your process about the same when you're actually writing something? I don't differentiate. I feel like if it goes with the story, yeah. I just even if it goes slightly out, if it goes slightly out, I can pull it in. If it's completely out, then people, the director's going to say, "Yeah, it's gonna, not going to match." Mm. But everybody wants a change. Everybody's the mundaneness of life is horrible, mm -hmm. so you just want to break it. And then even if it's at, at least we're trying, instead of just saying, "No, this is what will work," you know, not you're not boring people. Mm -hmm. We're willing to experiment. We're not willing to take challenges, even now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I'm composing a musical with Shaker Kapoor, and then we, we brought a rai kind of music in it, and everybody was like quiet for two days, and then slowly said, hey, I love it, AR. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> was, but for those two days, for you two didn't days, know. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's got rejected, they didn't like it, stuff. Right. So I found a singer who was around, mm -hmm. and then he, he sang something, I said like, why can't I push him to do this song, and mm -hmm. see what happens. He doesn't know a word of English, so we had to teach him mm -hmm. that little accent, French, yeah. dry accent. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got the pleasure of talking to Usaji Zakir Hussain. Yes. Um, and he said something that was so interesting to that us. That was him. He was also there. The, he was in that session. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, he said something so interesting because we asked him about being, you know, he's 
he is obviously a master of his craft yeah, at the he's tabla. Um, but we asked him about it and, and his process, and he answered, he's like, I don't consider myself a master, which is you know, ridiculous, because <laughs> he is. But he, he explained that, obviously, it's a more of a relationship between him and the tabla, and, and that, do you, can, do you, being a master yourself, um, you and, and, <laughs> yeah. and you are a genius, I, I can say that, um, no, I do you consider, consider your process the kind of the same to music? Is it? The, I think the constant seeking, mm -hmm. constant seeking of saying, you know, when we try probably 500 things, out of which five become amazing, mm -hmm. five or six become amazing, and it's like a blessing. I think, I, I think it's a blessing. We, you can try, you know, a thousand years, but still not crack something. But yeah. if you get one line to, you know, uh, linger in your heart, mm -hmm. people's heart, I think mm -hmm. that's a blessing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Because there's somewhere deep, there's a soul which is actually connecting to all the other souls. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for that, you have to constantly be cleansing yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your mind, the way you think about, because what you think actually manifests yeah. to the yes. song, yes. to the people, yes. and you can't fake it. You can't be an evil person and try to do a very good song. Right. <laughs> True. There, there's, there's goodness in all of us, and I feel like, how can you enhance that stuff? How can you trigger that? Mm. How can you manifest it in another when when people are listening to it? Yeah. yeah. And you know, transport people. Yeah. So I have a two-part question in that regard. Yeah. One's a quick answer, one's probably longer. The first <laughs> one is, just yes or no, do you ever experience writer block as an artist? I, you know, pressure sometimes. That was my second part. Yeah, the so pressure what, to create. The pressure to create. Yeah. So at least now it's better. Before it used to be, we start in March, then I do Rajnikanth movies. Rajnikanth's mm -hmm. a big star. Yeah. Right, oh yeah. So that this movie has to release by Diwali, let's say. Mm -hmm. Diwali is the big. Yeah, so now project. you have time frame so, for creative. And then I have to do the song, I have to do the background. And you know, the electricity used to be very funky in my place. Uh -huh. Used to bring two generators in, in the in the street. It used to be stationed, and oh, come on, it was hell. And then I'd be doing three movies. So the other director said, "My stuff is coming Diwali too, AR. So oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> so it was hell. So <laughs> I, I used to hate all these festivals because they used to give me hell, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's Diwali or uh, you know, New Year or Pongal, because." Oh my God, because I could never enjoy, but now it's much more leisure. Uh, you, you know, I, because I started traveling and then, so it always is busy, so let's go a little early, let's do this stuff. So mm. things which take longer mm -hmm. are better for me. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, I, I want to ask something on that. Oh, right? you talked about, sorry, you talked about writer's block. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Writer's block is, um, um, yeah, we all have that. Because the pressure, we have to deliver hits. It's right. not like there's no choice because you're getting paid yeah. for a hit. Right, <laughs> right. You go to him, you got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you do it? So sometimes I, the one trick I do is always fasting sometimes. Mm -hmm. You fast, you know, all the bad energies go away and then you're more in one with yourself. So that helps me to think, oh, this is right, this is wrong. As if you're clouded by sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That. And you're the first, first artist I've heard, and I'm sure there's many that do that. You're the first artist I've heard that has taken it to that place of that personal introspection and, and, and practices that you do that makes absolute sense to me that that would be something you do and you find that it, it brings a release. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, the pressure to not only produce a certain number of things, do you feel any pressure at all by the fact that you now have a, a, a quite an astonishing... When people don't know who you are, I'd say to them, He's the John Williams of India, and they know what that means in terms of what you've accomplished. Because you're an Oscar uh, winner, totally Grammy winner. Lost. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you, you multiple. Do you feel pressure in terms of what you know fans and people expect you to produce? Does that ever come into play in your mind as far as I, I know what I have to live up to in terms of what they expect of me? I mean, that's a good pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're not ignored, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good answer. <laughs> That's true. So that pressure pushes you to work harder. Yeah. Then go deeper, spend more time in music. Otherwise, you'll be holiday. Oh, I got a lot of money. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Just take time off. So the constant uh, churning out of music comes from that pressure where the expectations are what is he going to do next? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he, he going to do something great or is he going to mess up stuff? Yeah. So, you know, that, that pressure is good for even for me. Yeah. And the, the day you feel like, oh my God, everything is boring, I've done it all, mm -hmm. there's nothing more to explore. If I feel like I should, like, I should quit. Yeah, yeah, and for me that it's actually expanding. I feel like there's a ocean of knowledge to be learned. Yeah, you know, in orchestration, good. in uh, in lyrics, and good. We want you to keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please do. It feels so frustrating. I like 
You're so old and then still you have to learn, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it feels frustrating. Sure. So we've heard so many insane stories, not about yourself, but about like Raja, sir, mm-hmm. and, and people coming to him. Like, I think we heard this one story. That an entire film had already been shot. Okay. And he need like, they were like, we the score like or didn't work or something. And they're like, we need you to compose an entirely new score for this film that's already been shot. And it's something in like some ridiculous amount of days. Yeah, like seven so, days or something. Well, I mean, there's obviously a thousand story of Roger Sir and, and stories like that. But what's like the craziest thing a filmmaker has asked you? Something like that. And they can remain nameless unless yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to name them. <laughs> <laughs> well, even even Slumdog was, you know, it was given to me. Like it was the even the Jaihor song which you so was shot for another song. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? So I made the song, saw the visuals, I made that song, and then I made the whole soundtrack. I'm assuming, obviously, the same so, metronome. Yeah, absolutely. You have you can beat match, and yeah. then you can stretch things, and and then he started. I said, I told him one thing. I told him I want to do all the music. I don't because I that's how I've been doing. I mm-hmm. do all the songs and score so for 150 films. So he said, if you have the time, do it. <laughs> and that's how that came so about. I had to now. He's giving me a timer. <laughs> if if I don't do it, he use something else. Okay. So I had to replace everything. Like one by one, you took out the temp. And he put this one in. Wow! So, but that was, MIS song was lovely, and you know I would work with her yeah. on this. So that's that's fine. But mm-hmm. most of the stuff was like boom. Okay, that's another one gone. Then he sent this one. Wow! Wow! So how about these three ideas? Oh, I like this one. Can you change this? Can you add more strings to it? Wow! Wow! <laughs> the reason that is so shocking is not just because of the artistic challenge, but the fact that that is such a celebrated and Oscar-winning score. That's amazing. That that's really okay. The other thing, all the tests of you, you have to pass the fire trial by fire, and then you get yes, yeah. yeah, and then you get the next so one. So that was the trial by fire. If I had chickened out, say no, I don't have time. I don't think you can do it. Finish. Yeah, we we just reacted to the song that we've been told was originally a 16-minute song, and then it was shortened to six. Forget that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forget the name of it. Very kara like, kara. Yes. yes, that's it. And someone had told us this is going to be very different for. And it started. We're like, this sounds like Air Rahman. And then, did you have as much fun making that as it sounds? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it sounded like you had fun. Yeah, because. Uh, you know what happened, Leslie? Sometimes you have to be ready for the happy accidents. You, uh, I had the stuff. Then when I was there, uh-huh. then Kara Atakara was there. And I said, something's missing, something's missing. And then accidentally I moved it, and my mouse slipped. It went on the chorus. Uh-huh. I said, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that point, you know, the coin, the coin grab happened. So you got to grab it. Yes. You got to grab it. Wow. You can't say, no, that's what, he, that's what I meant. I don't care. It sounds it great. It works. So we have to be open about happy accidents. We have to be open about what could go wrong, which will be the, actually the right thing. Yeah. Sometimes you ask for a voice and you don't get that voice. Somebody else comes in and the whole song takes another. Yeah. For instance, there was a song in uh, 2.0 mm-hmm. and about the birds yeah. and you know that whole. So the director wanted uh, you know another famous singer. So I said uh, something told me like it needs something raw like. Baba Mal coming singing because it's about earthiness mm. and so this other guy who's I've seen I've been seeing for like 15 years he used to uh, do he was hanging out and with my mother's you know the spiritual students and all the stuff and he was there hey I want to sing a song for you it's like I looked at my assistant can you just take my the stuff which I sang put the lyrics which they sang and make him sing that one mm-hmm. <laughs> I came back and I forgot about it Two days later, I went to listen to it. I said, "Oh my God, that's the voice." Yeah, yeah, exactly like what I wanted. And then yeah. I called him back and tweaked it, re- redid the whole thing. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you you see, and then there are signs you have to take. Yeah. Why is this guy standing here this time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like morning five o'clock. Sure. He did something and he was standing there. So that's Bamba Bakia, who that's an amazing singer, incredible. very good human being. Wow. Um. So on, um, I, I wanted to ask a question to, to a composer. When you're doing a song for an Indian film and you have certain stars who really bring the energy, like yeah. let's say you have a Ranveer, a Danush, Prabhu Deva, whatever, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, people that have extreme energy. Yeah. Does that ever, do you ever know that before going in and you write the energy into it? Yeah, as yeah. opposed to somebody who like, uh, somebody who can't dance or bring the energy as well? You know, sometimes, you know, it goes to the, the wrong, wrong person, but 
Uh, I go with the director's vision because mm-hmm. the director has to live with the song for like thousand times. He has to listen to it, get ideas. Mm-hmm. So we'll know exactly when. If he likes it, he's gonna go. Like working with Shankar, he would yeah. give his whole energy into one song, like a movie. What he does in the movie, you do. Oh, so. the film I. Yeah. Oh my god. Incredible. I or even from the beginning, mm-hmm. like yeah. everything's a spectacle. Yes. Know? So, yeah. So now I'm doing a film with Tiger, mm-hmm. and he's so good at dancing. So yeah. Like, Right. Ahmed Khan is a you know director and a choreographer too, so we we've been vibing and said, oh yeah, I love that little you know motive you put that. Can we repeat it? Mm-hmm. So it's fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like I've fun and finished them. You know, it's always back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a preference, uh, and it may change from time to time, of what you do creatively? Like, do you prefer to just write? Do you prefer being in the studio and recording? Do you prefer live performances? Do you I like pref- everything. Yeah, it's all pretty equal. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is. Uh, you know, it's a gift we get that people are waiting to see you and perform. So we 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 try to even not take that you know uh, easily. We just work so much, want to give them surprises, and we give it, we start doing different arrangements so that either they can listen to a CD or you know the streaming thing. Yeah. So what are, what are they going to expect there? So let's give them the same thing, but in a completely musical way. So we also enjoy the process. It's not like a job. Yeah. Okay, give me the chords, let me play that stuff. <laughs> right. So everybody's put to task, even me. Yeah. If you just go slip off, you don't practice, you'll be humiliated on stage. <laughs> so on, um, you're an Oscar winner, in case you didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we, we often want, um, you know, stuff to get noticed or nominated that deserves to be, so people around the world can see the uh, talent that is coming from India. And oftentimes, uh, people say that we put too much importance on the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true, or do you think it's a vessel that can be used to help? uh... It is definitely a vessel because, you know, having winning the Oscars, I can go to any part of the world. Yeah. Yes. I can go on as a composer, and they'll respect. Otherwise, sometimes some traditions are not respected. Mm -hmm. They have this pre prejudice in the mind. Oh, you're Indian; you can only do that. Right. You're. You're. you're, you're, They have that. Right. It's okay. We have that also. Everybody has all mm-hmm. that prejudices. But I think the Oscar helped me to go to any part of the world. Mm-hmm. Now for Dubai Expo, you know, building a studio for me mm-hmm. called the Filbo Studio. Mm-hmm. According to my specs, there's a whole scoring stage with the whole thing. I've been mentoring an orchestra called the Filbo's Orchestra. Women from that part, 23 different nationalities. And mm-hmm. So the, all these stuff is. They also need something because the. Uh, big army of people are working to us and everybody needs to know why is this guy getting a studio? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why is this guy being, you know, like one movie I did, the director was not an Indian movie. I did, I did this, uh, so the director was like always cold a little bit and I was like, why is he cold? And then after the movie, you know, after I scored it, um, then we were sitting, there was one gentleman who came and I said, hey, I have a very good score. And then he was very cold and looked at me, hey, you know who this guy is? He's the guy who said, don't use you. Get a Western composer. <laughs> <laughs> no way. That so was the like, criteria. Yeah, so he, he came and, and tell that I'm I'm so... So that's why I was so confused. I think he was confused. <laughs> I, I would be too. Like, <laughs> 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 make a mistake. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. wow. So, <laughs> so you're against so many things. Like, yeah. It's not an easy world. Yeah. But. What is anything you're doing right now that we and the big, great, big, stupid family you would want us to know about whether it's something you're involved in philanthropically or creatively what is it you would like us to know and support because we want to support what you're doing uh actually there's so many things I'm, right <laughs> yeah pick, pick as many as you want <laughs> okay so the yeah so my conservatory you know the students are yeah. amazing and i've just realized that it just takes nurturing and, and training to make an artist a genius yeah from anybody. Mm. So you see all these piano players coming in. Uh, two of the kids have won you know, so many awards last year during the lockdown, they sent the piano. Mm-hmm. And they won the gold and platinum and bronze. Again and again and again, like four different competitions. You know? That happened for conservatory. Lydian, you know, Lydian Nath's one of them. Yes. Mm. He won the one million dollars. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep. So it's all that, all that good things happening. Right now, actually, I finished my movie, 99 Songs. It mm-hmm. released on Netflix, it's on Netflix. Yep. Yes. And then uh, I've written and uh, I produced that one. So I'm directing, a, I've directed a sensory cinematic experience called Le Masque. It's a virtual reality and sensory. And, and sensory. Yeah, it's a wholesome experience wow. which 
it's just jaw dropping for all of us because um, the way you feel when you put that, people anywhere in the world, every nationality who's seen it, the jaw drops. Yeah. And they have give kind comments. So I, it's very hard to distribute that kind of stuff. So I hope that I can install that and get a right outlet so people can enjoy that. So I play to my friends, I'm going to play to you. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Um, and to, to finish it off here, so thank you so much for talking. I just want to ask you a few random questions here. Uh, coffee or chai? Coffee. Coffee. Uh, your favorite classical composer? Bach. Mm. Uh, your favorite Indian film, any region? Uh, <laughs> one of. One of your favorite. Oh my god. It's Okay, one of the one of one is good. Like Mughal Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. 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 And, uh, <laughs> why? Because it took twelve years to make it. <laughs> they still yeah. made it. And yeah. uh, when you look at it, every everything has got soul. Every dialogue, every song. Yeah. yeah. And every action. You see that they're so vulnerable. Yeah. But they've come up with good stuff. Too. Favorite uh, Hollywood film. Oh. One of oh, again. Sound of music. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, what is one piece of advice you'd give yourself starting out on Roja? If you could yeah, go back and talk to yourself. Talking to you back in 1992. No advice, actually. I, I still feel like such a big blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got one of the India's best director, mm -hmm. best producer. Whatever I wanted, and the exposure, and the love, and the awards, I got asked for I, I don't think... It, I still feel unworthy about many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking to us. It's been an absolutely huge honor for yes, us. Yes. Uh, we, uh, we uh, I think, explored maybe 3% of your work, and it feels Assuredly. like there's still a, a world of more that we haven't explored yet. Uh, so thank you so much for talking to us and for just sharing your talent with the world. Uh, and I hope more people get to it. Yeah, and I, w one of the things that we've noticed, because we've done approximately 25 interviews or so, and there's one criteria across the board with every artist, whether they're a singer, they're a dancer, they're an actor, a director, a musician. It's this attribute of deep, genuine humility in every single one of them that you are an example of as well. Um, I know humble people don't like necessarily hearing how... <laughs> no, you know why we're humble? Why? Because we don't know whether we can do the next thing or not. <laughs> but that's... that's, that's <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So thank you so much thank you. Uh, been, for being with us today. It's been a pleasure yeah. talking to you, man. Pleasure. Thank you.